Hey, Mackenzie, it's Sam Spencer from Soccer Sheet. How are you doing today? Doing great, Sam. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, first off, I uh, just want to congratulate you on the move to uh, Nashville. It's obviously an exciting club. And, uh, you know, let, what do you think about uh, moving over to Music City? Yeah, thank you. Uh, really excited. Um, I've had an, an opportunity to speak with uh, the head coach, with uh, the GM, and with the head scout. And from what I've heard, just about with their club values and the way that they play soccer as a team, I'm just really excited to get over there and get started. So, you know, before you came to the uh, to MLS in the first place, you played a lot of Bundesliga ball. Did you pick up any German? Yeah, I can still. It's been a while since I've left, but the German hasn't left me yet. It still speaks. Yeah, uh, wie viel in uh, Toren gemacht? Oh, das weiß ich nicht. Um, ich habe so viele Jahre da gespielt. Um, ich weiß, es ist wirklich nichts mehr. Oh, is that good? Uh, well, obviously, Hanover 96 is one of the, you know, legendary Bundesliga clubs, even though they uh, went down to the second Bundesliga. You know, what was it like for, first off, like playing for a club with such a storied history in football? Yeah, it was great. Um, I signed there uh, originally for their second team, and I kind of worked my way, my way up over time. Uh, it was kind of right around whenever COVID hit, so... Uh, I think I played nine or 10 games for the second team, and then uh, we had to break for COVID, but I got the opportunity to jump up to the first team and to play with them, and, you know, it was great. Um, obviously, very cool being in such a historical club and, you know, being around players who have, you know, been so successful in football, so it's something that I'll definitely take with me, and, you know, hopefully I can um, build on some of the points that made me successful in that time. And, uh, you know, was there was there anything really notable about your time there? Did you get to did you get to play like a, any of the cult clubs like uh, St. Pauli, Union Berlin? Um, yeah, I mean, the team played against some of those teams. Uh, I only made one appearance for their senior team. Um, so I didn't get to play, you know, all the big boys. But yeah, um, even Vera Bremen, we played them in the cup. And, you know, it was such a wonderful experience. Jump right in, Austin FC. You came to MLS. How much did that have to do with them being a new club? How much was it with uh, you being an Austinite? Uh, what what brought you back to the capital of Texas? Yeah, I think that both of those things definitely played a role. Um, obviously, with an expansion team coming to town, that you know it opens up an opportunity for me being from the city of Austin. Um, and I'd always been in contact with you know with my agent, who was in contact with Claudio at the time, and. You know, things just worked out in a way that um, I couldn't have even planned. So um, I was originally expecting to actually sign a new contract at Hanover, but um, things didn't work out quite the way that I planned it. The coach ended up getting fired, and so did the sporting director, both the people who wanted to keep me. Um, so it kind of opened up a door for me to leave, and Austin was obviously a very exciting team at the time. So um, I ended up going on trial there, and um, I signed after two or three weeks. So it worked out perfectly. And then, uh, so what was it like when you get to the first, uh, you know, uh, ex expansion draft for Charlotte FC, you find out you've been picked? Did you know it was going to happen ahead of time? I knew it was going to happen, but there probably wasn't as much time in between me finding out it was going to happen and it happening than you might actually think. Um, so I actually wasn't even aware of the expansion draft, uh, just with me being new to the MLS. Uh, to be completely honest, and I was on holiday in New York with a few friends of mine, and my agent called me, and they're just like, hey, um, Charlotte FC is really interested. And I was like, oh, yeah, like, that's great. I'd definitely be, you know, interested in going there. I'd heard great things about Charlotte and obviously, you know, playing at the Bank of America in front of so many fans. I think that it had already been leaked that they wanted to get X amount of fans, you know, there for the home opener against LA Galaxy. Um, so I flew home that day. And I was looking up, like, when is the expansion draft? And I was like, oh, man, it's tomorrow. So I actually, within the span of t 24 hours, I found out that, you know, the expansion draft was actually a thing. And then I got picked in the expansion draft. So it was a very, very fast turnaround. You're in Charlotte. We have a new team. It's a, a team that got delayed for a year. 
you have people like uh, Brandt and and Fuchs who've been, you know, playing for the independents, sort of coming together to a team. Uh, I, th I think when you came in, uh, you know, Carol wasn't announced as a piece yet. Camille wasn't there yet. Uh, what was it? What was it like coming into, uh, you know, a, a team where you've got to be ready to be playing the Galaxy in, in two or three months? Yeah, um, it was really exciting, I think, from a sense, because we got to build the club from the ground up, you know, which I think is very, very rewarding. And I think that you look back on the time and it's like, there's never going to be, you know, another inaugural match in Charlotte's history. And I was lucky enough to be able to, you know, be around that and be able to play in that. Um, but I think that it was just a very exciting, you know, moment for the team in general. Um, you know, no one knew what the season held for Charlotte. Um, but in the preparation and, you know, through a lot of spontaneous planning and events, you know, we were able to, you know, in my eyes, play a very successful inaugural season for Charlotte, something that we built on last season. And, you know, we made the playoffs. And I think that Charlotte as a soccer club will just continue to, you know, build and expand. What was it like walking out uh, on the pitch at the bank at that Galaxy game uh, with, you know, setting the MLS attendance record? Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, I think that any player would tell you the same thing. I've at that moment, I'd never played in front of so many fans. You know, I think I'll be lucky if I ever play in front of that many fans again. But it's definitely, you know, an experience that I'm never going to ever forget. Now, in the in the inaugural season, uh, you know, you made an impact in the Open Cup games uh, for the team. You know, what had you played in the Open Cup before? What what was uh, what was it like uh, helping the team? you know, advanced pretty deep in the cup for the, for a first year team. Yeah, it was great. Um, I think that my first season for the crown was a lot of firsts for me as a player. Um, I think at Austin, you know, I kind of got my feet wet in the MLS. Unfortunately, you know, I got kind of got injured right whenever I got there. So I didn't get to play as many games as, you know, I might've hoped to, but um, yeah, that first season with Charlotte, I got to play in the open cup for the first time and, you know, it was really, really cool playing in Richmond, for instance, and um, scoring those goals. Um, I thought that the Greenville Triumph game was really, really exciting, too. Um, so, like I said, there are a lot of rewarding moments that come with building the, you know, a team from the ground up like we did the inaugural season with Charlotte. And um, the Open Cup run, if you want to call it, that was definitely one of those moments. And uh, in your first season, you, you know, you were involved in five goals. Um what what was the biggest um, or the most memorable uh, scoring moment at the very least uh, in the first season? Uh, goal against Orlando at home. You know, we were pushing to get a result. And I think I, I scored at a really pivotal moment in the second half. And it was really cool seeing the fans' reactions to that um, and how they responded to that. And I remember, you know, kind of pumping up the crowd after that. So uh, probably that moment specifically. And, you know, Orlando was a, a big team for, for us in the first season, right? Yeah, I mean, they were also good this season. Not the result well. we wanted in the final game, but how do you feel like the way that the team has evolved and got into this point? Um, you know, have we found um, the right lineup for this club to succeed going forward? Yeah, definitely. I don't think there's only one lineup, you know, that's going to allow us to succeed. I think we have good players everywhere and um, players can come in and um, there are some that are interchangeable. And I think that we have a, a really strong roster around us and um, you no know, players can step in. You know, if we have a few games in a week, we can switch switch players around. But um, I do think that we found an identity, um, something that we can you know, build upon for next year. And I think we're only going to be stronger. And what, what are you going to remember the most from this season? Uh, playing at home, I think. Uh, just in front of the fans, we had a few really awesome moments, you know, whether it was the first game in front of 75 or, um, you know, those games where we were battling back and the fans were behind us. Um, I think just playing at home is something I'll remember. And uh, anything else I missed? And any shout outs? You know, anything else on your mind? Uh, no. Excited for next season already. We'll be back. There we go. Uh, we spoke very briefly at Red Bull Stadium uh, in New Jersey last game of the season. Uh, what 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 was the end of the season like for you when you um, 
you know, com coming off of obviously the Columbus game earlier in the week, uh, we're finally eliminated from playoff contention. Um, and then you get to, to Red Bulls and, you know, it, it just, uh, it just wasn't, wasn't the team's day that day. Uh, but at the very least, you know, you, the team finished in ninth, had a very respectable inaugural season. What were you feeling then? Um, yeah. So after that New York game, we knew that we weren't going to make playoffs beforehand. Um, so that wasn't the game that decided anything. But I think that after that Red Bulls game, despite the result, I think that there was a sense of pride considering what we did accomplish, you know, being an expansion team and, you know, pushing to make playoffs all the way up until the second to last game is, you know, not something to laugh at. But um, I think that it also left, um, you know, the desire for more, which we showed this past season. You know, we were so close last go around and then this season we finally made it in. Um, so that just showed that none of the guys in the locker room were content with what we did. And that was definitely the feeling that I had myself. You know, um, at the end of the, at the end of the Columbus match back at home, um, I, I'm pretty, I think the last player that they brought out to, to talk to us was Anton. And, um, you know, it seemed like he had, um, such big hopes for the next season and was was already such a big leader in the club. Um, you know, probably a good chance he would have worn the armband uh, this year or two. Um, and, and then, you know, for a lot of us, that was the last time we saw him. And um, I just wanted to know how um, how that affected you now that you can, you know, look back on the entire season. Yeah, I think it's something that's still affecting me. I definitely know that it's something that's affecting my teammates and the people around me. Um, yeah, obviously, it's tough to lose a brother, right? Um, and we're never going to forget him, and we're never going to forget what he stood for and his legacy as a human. And I don't know if you've ever been inside of our locker room, but um, at the bank, we have a quote that hangs over our wall, something that we look at every single time before we go on the pitch. And um, this year we kept the jersey around for him. And, um, you know, his legacy is going to live on with us for forever. Um, we're never going to forget who he was or, you know, what he meant to each of us as players. And um, we're definitely going to, I mean, the team's going to take his legacy into next season. I say we, my, myself included, you know, over at Nashville, um, and a lot of people spoke about, you know, us playing for Anton this season. And that was definitely the case. But um, I think Charlotte Football Club will be playing for him for forever just because of what he meant to the team and what he meant to the badge. And what what was it like seeing Ashley walk out with his daughter uh, in the last match? Yeah. Um, goosebumps, really. Um, absolutely crazy. Just looking back on, you know, just how tragic an accident it was in Miami in preseason and then us clinching a playoff berth against Miami and Charlotte. It's, it was um, unbelievable. Um, and I know that he would have been, you know, so happy for us in that moment. So I wish he could have lived it with us. Well, uh, I mean, that, that leads me to the next big question. Um, messy mania. Um, you, you got to be there for, uh, you know, probably the, the most transformative thing to happen in MLS in years. Uh, what was it, uh, was it overblown? I mean, obviously, you know, respect for one of the greatest players in the world, but at the same time, um, sometimes it seemed like the entire major league soccer with all these amazing, talented teams and players, uh, sort of became about one player. <laughs> what 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 was it like navigating that? How do you navigate that? Um it wasn't so much something that we had to navigate. I'm sure that the inner Miami players would have something different to say, but um I don't think that any any of it was necessarily blown out of proportion. I think that, you know, there's a lot that comes with having a good player in this league, but having the best player ever is, you know, even more than that. So I think that what he brought to the league in terms of um, attention and, you know, height is, is only going to be good for Charlotte. Also, um, you saw how many people came out to, 
you know, watch us play against him at the bank. And that's no coincidence. Obviously, you know, you have the fans that are here for us, but, you know, there are also, you know, quite a few who wanted to see him. So um, it's nothing but good for the league and it's just going to help us grow the game here as a whole. Yeah. And, and I know a lot of fans who are able to renew their season tickets thanks to that game. Right. There you go. <laughs> Um, so, so what, what am I missing? Like, uh, out of, when you think about, you think back with your uh, time with Charlotte, um, what are, what is really going to last with you? What's going to stay with you? What sticks out? Playing at the banks, definitely um, going to be something that'll take with me for a long time. Um, obviously we spoke about that LA game, but there have been quite a few other instances where we've played in front of, you know, 30,000 plus and to have, you know, a league average attendance, of, you know, 30 plus over the past two seasons is phenomenal. So, you know, I'll definitely hold the fans near and dear to me. Um, certain games and certain matches and certain moments, I'm definitely going to, you know, hold in my heart, whether it's, like I said, the Orlando goal that I scored, whether it's New York City this year, whether it was, you know, Chicago last season, wherever we were fighting to get in the playoffs and, you know, that come from behind victory. Um, you know, there are certain moments and, um times that I've experienced this year that have been some of the most memorable of my career. So I'm definitely going to hold those near um, certain relationships that I've formed with, you know, my teammates past and present. Um, those are going to last a lifetime. So um, I'm very, very thankful for my time here in Charlotte. Very blessed to have played for such a wonderful club and such a wonderful city with such great fans. Um, and I'll never forget my time here. Is there anybody on the team who really sticks out to you as a, uh either uh, a mentor or a mentee or a, a, maybe just a colleague and a friend? Um, I mean, I could name quite a few names. Uh, I feel like friend wise, I don't want to, you know, get into naming people, not too many, uh, just because I'm going to inevitably going to name, leave somebody's name out. Um, and I don't want them to be upset with me, but, uh, I'd say right now, like probably one of my closest friends is Jalen. Uh, so, uh we're actually still doing off-season training right now so i see him pretty much every day but um he's just one example of many of the friends that i've met at charlotte that you know i'm going to take with me for the rest of my life so very very thankful for the opportunity to meet such wonderful people and you know the last time we spoke we were uh at a event that george marks was leading uh in a community service event for the laundry project um, what, how much are you going to remember? Do you have any big off the pitch memories from Charlotte, uh, being out there in the community, giving back, uh, something that I think has, has really been a priority for the team? Yeah. So I did a couple laundry projects, which was great. Sometimes um, it's breathtaking it's just just, seeing what such a small gesture can mean to somebody else's day, you know, just the small act of paying for somebody's laundry, um, on one random Sunday could completely make somebody's week. Um, which was reflected in some of the feedback that we got from some of the people that we met, which was, you know, remarkable. I think that, you know, whenever that's the case, although we're the ones who are, you know, helping them out, they also help us out just be, by giving us a different perspective. Um, so stuff like the laundry project, stuff like I did a lot of work with Dustin Swinehart, um, primarily in that first year uh, where we'd go around and, you know, we would, whether it was opening up like a small pitch or, um, coming out to a school to read them, you know, a book and play soccer with them. Um, all those small moments and, you know, touching those people in turn, they end up touching us and affecting us in our lives. So um, I'll definitely hold that with me as well. And I look forward to doing more stuff like that when I get to Nashville. And my, my final question for us today um... You know, uh, what, what's your goodbye message? What's your validatory message to to the fans and the, you know, the thousands and tens of thousands who have been out there supporting you for 42 matches with the crown? Charlotte fans, thank you so much. It was such a blessing to be able to play soccer in the city and to live and experience football with you guys. Um, I'm never going to forget what you guys brought to the stadium each and every match day. And I hope that you guys continue to do that for the team next season. Thank you. McKenzie, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate you. Thank you very much.